Hey friends, it's Andrea and welcome to the Choosing Ease course. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm so delighted and I really truly hope that this course um, is a place that we can all explore this idea of making this shift, making this pivot toward ease and um, really finding a kind of sanctuary in ourselves um, inside whatever circumstances we're in. Um, so I want to say that. And um, I want to give you an overview of the course so that you have a sense of what to expect. Um, I already outlined the course in the description that you probably read when you signed up, but um, I just kind of want to go through each piece and um, just give you a sense of where I'm coming from with each one so you know what to expect. Okay. So the first week is going to be about the mindset of ease. And this is probably the most important part. This is mostly just like a loosening up of our habitual ways of thinking and the habitual way that we create story and narrative around uh, all of our experiences, really. Um, but it's getting uh, mindful and creating consciousness around what story we're layering onto things right out of the gate. Often these stories are um, around struggle and how hard things are, or um, like in the example um, that I gave about getting the blood draw, if you read that piece, um, I, I did a sneak preview of the course, you may have read it. Um, there's a way that I was, I go in with this idea that blood draws are bad. Um, oh God, I hate this. I'm going to pass out. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And when I could actually get present and get curious and loosen up that, that habitual train of thought, there was this whole world that was available to me that was unfolding in the moment that I had access to. And without it, I would have just been sort of closed off into my, my little grumpy story. So that's just one example. Um, but yeah, I think that we we have these sort of cultural beliefs about struggle being more valuable than ease, and we just want to name some of that and, and shift our mindset around this whole thing. Okay, week two, clearing space. So, uh, so I'm sure you guys have done space clearing before or Marie Kondoing or, or whatever it is that you've tried in the past. And um, I think it is important that we do some of that. In um, in Mondo Biondo, which was my, my first e-course I taught about manifesting dreams, uh, that was one of the things that we focused on in that class as well. So when we can um, eliminate some of the noise in our life, uh, and that noise can be busyness in general, over committing, overdoing, um, when we can clear our calendar and create some boundaries, um, we make space for what we actually want and actually want to choose to invite in uh, to come in. Otherwise, it's just clogged up with things that we feel like we should do or we have to do or, or whatever. Um, and then there's the clearing physical space, um, which, of course, just gives us, like, oh, when my visual landscape is more... Uh, clutter-free or clean, I feel like just the sense of like calm and ease like when I walk into my house. So that's sort of a, like a feng shui thing. So we'll be looking at all different kinds of, of clearing that week and um, seeing how that impacts our, our feeling of ease. Next week, self-compassion. I'm, really, um, I'm really passionate about self-compassion and it's something that I've been practicing in earnest for a number of years now. And so um, we'll talk about how um, cultivating those practices can create a lot more ease in our life when we're not adding on um, more suffering by um, uh, not being kind to ourselves. Okay. Next week is getting into alignment and flow. Okay. So this is something that I haven't really had language for until more recently. And um, it's becoming a little bit of a buzzword, this idea of like alignment is the new hustle and let's get into alignment before we take action and that kind of thing. 
And um, so I'm excited to talk to you about that because it does really relate to this manifesting thing, which is really another passion of mine. And, um, and it's also about ease because I don't want to work very hard, you know, like, like, of course, you know, I show up and I do my work and all of that stuff, but I don't value working hard. I don't value struggle and I actually want flow and I want ease and I want enjoyment. And when things feel so crunchy and hard, I actually have to ask myself, like, you know, how can I make this easier? Because it's not in flow when I'm in that crunchy place. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about quantum manifesting and um, it's going to be really juicy. Okay. Last week, we're going to talk about how authenticity creates ease. And this is just really about leaning into who we actually are and really celebrating that and not wasting our energy trying to be a better version of ourselves than we already are. <sighs> Don't you just want to exhale? Not having to be a better version of yourself? Yeah. And furthermore, there's a way that um, the things that we think are broken about us or wrong with us uh, can often be our superpower or our gold. And I want to give you some examples of that and have you look into your own life at some of your own perceived uh, flaws and um, places that you feel uh, shame around and try to hide and suppress. But actually, uh, we can um, transmute those things and into this place where we get to celebrate them and see how, oh, this is actually a strength. Okay, that's the plan. I hope you're excited to do this uh, really just an exploration with me. Um, the most important thing to do is to spend the next um, month that we're together being curious and as present as possible because that's what it's going to require for us to just be paying attention to um, the ways in which we move in the world and then pivoting toward ease, that little path right there. Okay. So much love to you guys. Let me know how that all sounds in the comments. Tell me. I want to know. <laughs>